Hey viewers, something I'm frequently asked about is my tools. People want to see my tools, where do I get my tools, what tools should they buy, can I recommend tool sets? And so this video is going to be about tools. Um, where do I get my tools? Well, I've been working on bikes for a long time and I've accumulated the tools over years. I've gotten them at local bike shops, Amazon, eBay, uh, Sears, Craigslist, garage sales, flea markets. Um, most of the tools, one at a time as I've needed them. Sometimes I find tools like uh, at a flea market, you know, real cheap, I'll buy it and stuff. Uh, sometimes I've bought in boxes of tools like at uh, on eBay or on uh, Craigslist or at a garage sale. And so over the years I've accumulated tools. What tools should you buy? Uh, buy quality tools in general. Um, I think generally you're going to be happy if you buy quality tools. Uh, cheap tools are cheap and they break. They're just not as nice to work with as buying, you know, using quality tools. Um, you know, where a lot of my, my wrenches are like uh, Craftsman, I do have some tools from Harbor Freight as well and they work at a pinch but uh, having some like nice quality tools, they're just nicer to work with and they're going to last forever. And uh, so that's really what I can recommend is buy quality tools and buy the tools as you need them. Tool sets. Um, I don't know if I, I can really recommend any tool set because a lot of your tool sets are going to be just cheap tools filled with, you know, just cheap tools. And, you know, they, they're just not good. There are some tool sets of experience. You know, better tools like Park Tool, you know, these buy sets, but they're going to be expensive and you're going to end up with a lot of tools that you may not need. Um, uh, uh, tools that, you know, fit like a mountain bike may not work on a road bike and vice versa. Uh, tools that work on a 1970s bike may not be needed for a 1990s bike, but tools for a 1990s bike may not work for a 1970s bike. So it really depends on the bike that you're working on, what tools you need. And so, like I said, in general, buy the tools um, as you need them and then you'll just, and just accumulate the tools that you need over the years and I think that's just the better way to go. Before I get into the bike specific tools, I'm going to kind of go over a lot of just general purpose tools that you're probably going to uh, need or want. Uh, a nice set of combination wrenches, especially metric ones. Uh, most modern bikes are mostly metric stuff, so you're going to use a lot of metric tools. Now this uh, set, I probably bought uh, between maybe 7mm or 16mm, um, but I've added on uh, combination wrenches over the years uh, as I find them in garage sales and flea markets and sizes I don't have, so I, I buy those and just, you know, one, you know, one, two wrenches and just keep adding on uh, there. And uh, so a nice set of metric combination wrenches is uh, something you're definitely going to want to have. And here are my SAE wrenches. Again, I bought like a basic set and then I've added on uh, from flea markets and garage sales or whatever with some of the larger sizes as I found them cheap. Uh, I don't use these nearly as much on bikes, but I do occasionally and they're just kind of nice to have. Now here are some of my sockets and wrenches. Um, I actually have more sockets than this, but uh, so these are some of the ones I use the most. Again, working on bikes, the ones I'm gonna use most are the metric sizes, though I do use SAE sometimes, but the metric are the ones I use the most. Uh, the, the, ones I, the sockets I use the most are the 3 8 inch drive sockets, though I do use the quarter inch sometimes, and rarely do I use the half inch ones, but they're nice to have for some stuff. Now these are 12 point sockets here, um, but sometimes it's nice to have the six point sockets. So if you're worried about stripping off a nut or something, you know, anything like that. It's also nice to have uh, some deep sockets as well. So uh, sometimes if you have to loosen nut over uh, a, a bolt that's kind of sticking up, that these uh, regular sockets just won't work. So sometimes it's nice to have deep sockets as well. So um, a lot of these were bought as parts of a set, uh, but I've also added on uh, from flea markets and garage sales. And uh, it's just nice to have a nice variety of sockets because uh, you never know what you're going to need. And then again to go along with the sockets and wrenches, I have some uh, 3 8 inch drive extensions uh, which are ha nice to have. I also have some half inch ones and I probably have some, a quarter inch one around here somewhere or other. But uh, I use these extensions occasionally. 
Okay, and here are some of my hex sockets. Uh, metric, of course. Uh, these are 3 8 inch drive, and I use these quite a bit. Now, these ones are like extended length shaft uh, hex sockets. Uh, they're made by uh, Tecton, and I don't use these as often, but uh, I use these when working on like old shocks, uh, like old rock shocks, if I'm going to be taking apart. Uh, there's a bolts way down deep inside there that you need like extended length hex uh, sockets like this to uh, remove, to open them up. And uh, so if you're going to be working on like old shocks like that, rock shocks, uh, then something like this is a must have. Now here's some of my adjustable wrenches, uh, some different sizes. Uh, I mostly use these one down here. I use them for like a limited amount of things, uh, mostly like larger nuts. I get some negative comments on uh, the use of them. Well, bite me. Uh, these mostly came from like flea markets, so they're a little bit rough. I've cleaned them up, but I got them relatively inexpensively. Uh, this guy up here, this is a nice big 16 inch one, and I use this sometimes. Mostly I use this uh, for moving like uh, really stuck freewheels. I can grab the freewheel remover tool, get this. I got a nice long handle, get some leverage to help uh, remove like a really stuck freewheel. Now, a nice variety of pliers is good. Have some uh, vice grips, uh, channel locks, uh, just regular pliers, needle noses, little uh, angle uh, needle noses, like little uh, surgical, like little clamp thingies here. Uh, like reaching in real tight areas and then reverse pliers these are kind of nice when you squeeze they kind of spread spread out uh, I use these like on handlebars like uh, on the stem to kind of open it up a little bit to get this a handlebar in and out without scratching it up um, but just a nice variety of pliers nice to have uh, don't use these things like on nuts or anything like that use uh, regular wrenches for those um, but these are just handy to have for some things and then a variety of screwdrivers in both flat tip and uh, Phillips tip are uh, a must have. And now a variety of hammers from like just this big Herkin thing down to like a smaller one here. Uh, they're nice to have. A uh, uh, rubber mallet, I use this occasionally, like maybe like tapping on a uh, crank onto a spindle before I kind of like bolt it on there. Uh, but it's just kind of nice to have. You can hit things without uh, really marring them up. And then a wooden mallet, I use this quite a bit. Uh, like if I have like a wrench on a bottom bracket, I could kind of tap it a little bit to kind of help maybe get it broken loose. Uh, now this, you can't buy this exact thing because I actually made this out of a piece of a uh, fallen tree out of my backyard on a, on a, and I put it on a wed lathe and turned it, but I use it quite a bit. But you can buy uh, things similar to this and they're just really nice to have. Now hex wrenches, uh, metric. I pretty much only ever use metric hex wrenches on bikes and stuff. I have SAE, but metric is what I use. So here's like a, just a general uh, set of uh, hex wrenches here, and I use these sometimes, but more often than not what I use are these, especially this one. Uh, these little three-way wrenches, this has uh, four, five, and six millimeter hex wrenches on it, and I use this all the time. These are the very common sizes of uh, hex uh, screws and bolts that you'll find on a bike. Now this one here has two, 2.5, and three millimeters on it, and I'll use this sometimes, especially for like derailleur pulley screws, or on uh, sometimes bottle cage screws will be down to like uh, three millimeter, uh, but this tool especially is the one I use. But I also have like a, a, a long T-handle five millimeter uh, hex wrench, and I use this uh, every now and then. Um, I actually have other sizes as well, but it's, it seems to be the five millimeter one is the one I, I use most often of that. A breaker bar. This is about two feet long. I got this at uh, Harbor Freight, I think, but it's got like a half inch uh, drive on the end here for a socket. So it pretty much just lives with a one inch socket mounted on it because pretty much the only thing I use this for is removing free wheels. This one inch socket perfectly fits uh, the various park tool, free wheel remover tools, and so it just gets right on there. And I can use this big uh, breaker bar to get a lot of leverage on, on these tools to help uh, remove really uh, stuck uh, free wheels. So this is just a really nice tool to have. Cheater bar. Uh, you will not find this in the tool section of your local hardware store. No, go to the plumbing section. It's a big piece of iron pipe. And what is this used for? More power. You got a wrench here and you can't quite get enough leverage. Just slide this big pipe over the handle. Boom, longer handle, lots of leverage. Break it loose, more power. <laughs> a 
big pipe wrench. This is a 24 inch one, uh, this size or even bigger. Uh, you can use these for, they say, uh, removing like a frozen seat post. You can kind of clamp on there and maybe get it to move. And so a big pipe wrench is sometimes handy to have. Now you probably want a torque wrench. Uh, this is like a 3 8 inch drive, which is probably what you're going to want uh, for working on a bike. A half inch is just going to be too big for most of the stuff on a bike, so a 3 8 inch drive is really nice. And I like the beam style. I have some clicker style as well, but the beam style is just what I prefer when working on bikes. And it's got uh, newton meters and inch pounds in the ranges there. And uh, if you need to convert to uh, foot pounds, you go ahead and convert the inch pounds to foot pounds and uh, use this wrench anyway. But this is what I use. Now, like a nice little variety of punches here. Uh, these are, you know, used with a hammer. You can use these to knock a cotter pin out of a crank or to uh, uh, open up a uh, freewheel by, you know, getting it in a little uh, hole there and kind of tap it around and get it to loosen up. So these are just kind of nice to have sometimes. Now dental picks. I found these at a garage sale and uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, they're great for like when you need to really reach down in something and kind of uh, pull something out uh, or poke something out. Uh, something like these are just really nice to have occasionally. Now my little mini grease gun, if you watched uh, many of my videos, um, undoubtedly you've seen this because I use this quite a bit. It's a great little tool. It's uh, made by uh, Dual Co. And that's the one I really recommend. Uh, other companies make them, but uh, some of them are, are very poor quality and leak and stuff. But the Dual Co is very good. And uh, you go ahead and fill it up with your own grease. And I just love this thing and use it all the time. A uh, digital caliper. Uh, this is not like a super high end one, but it works great. Um, it will do both metric and uh, inches here, but I use it mostly in metric. But it's great for like measuring like uh, seat post or uh, stems or measuring openings or whatever like that. It's just a great little tool to have and I use it quite often. Now I have a couple of vices that I use. Like I have this one here. It's a three and a half inch uh, vise. I have it mounted to a piece of wood, which makes it a little bit more mobile here. And I use this for quite a bit of stuff. I can rotate it around a little bit. And then I have this vise. If you've seen my videos, you've probably seen this. And I've had people ask me, what is this? It's a drill press vise. Uh, I like it because it's low profile. And I actually bought it because uh, it made shooting uh, close-up uh, videos a little bit easier. But it's actually just a really handy little vise. I like it a lot. And then a drill and drill bits are uh, sometimes handy to have, uh, say, as uh, drilling out uh, like a, a screw or a, a cotter pin or something like that. Uh, get nice, uh, sharp uh, drill bits, and, uh, but definitely handy to have. Uh, a nice set of metric taps is nice to have because sometimes you need to clean up the threads in a screw hole or something. So a good quality set of metric taps and, of course, the handles for the taps. Now this is a cool tool to have. It's a thread restorer file. It's got eight different faces, each with a different threading. They come in both metric and SAE. And what you do is you, you have a screw or a bolt with some damaged threads. You find the proper face and you can use it to file along the threads and help clean out and repair the damaged threads. It's just a really cool tool to have in the toolbox. And then a hacksaw sometimes nice to have, like say you need to cut a uh, fork steerer shorter or handlebars or just something's like stuck in there and you need to cut it loose, so sometimes a hacksaw is nice to have. Now another tool that's nice to have is an impact driver. And what this is uh, used for is helping to remove like uh, stuck screws and bolts. Um, this can be used with like a socket here, but more commonly I use it with like these like little screwdriver bits. So like if you're trying to use like a regular screwdriver and you're trying to turn it, a lot of times you might start stripping out those slots. How this works is this allows you to get downward pressure. So you're actually pushing down and then you can strike the back here with a hammer which will cause it to be pushing down at the same time. It will cause it to twist a little bit at the same time. And so hopefully that will uh, minimize stripping out those slots at the same time, help break the screws loose. Uh, now, a lot of times this is used like in you know, automotive type stuff. Uh, the screws on a bike are probably a little bit more delicate. So you might want to use this with a little bit more care uh, when using this on a bike. Well, now I'm into the more uh, the bike specific tools. And um, again, I already covered these little uh, three way uh, hex wrenches. There's also a uh, three way nut driver, and this has uh, eight, nine, and 10 millimeter uh, little sockets on the end of here. And this is also a very handy little tool to have. 
Now this is a, a tool that I use quite often. It's, 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 it's got a ruler on there. It's got little holes in here to measure different sizes of ball bearings, anywhere from one eighth inch up to a quarter inch. It's got holes in here for measuring uh, the cotter pins for cranks from eight millimeters to nine and a half millimeters. And it's also got like little things here to hook in uh, spokes and measure the, the length of spokes. Plus you can use it just as a regular ruler as well in both uh, inches and in millimeters on both sides. So it's a great little tool to have. Okay, so here's a couple little uh, brake wrenches from Park Tool, OBW3 and OBW4. And what these are used for is aligning like side pull caliper type brakes. So you want the brake pads to hit the rim at the same time, and so you need to center it. And so these uh, wrenches, there's often there'll be flats on the uh, little pivot thing for the brake, and you can hook onto there and then adjust the brake one way or the other, and then tighten it into place. Uh, so that it's got like four different sizes on this wrench and then this wrench has got the one But it's also got these little hook things here And so sometimes the brakes don't have the flats so you can hook this on there and it kind of grabs the uh, brake And you can adjust it one way or the other and then tighten it into place So these are cool, cool little wrenches to have for adjusting brakes Cable cutters. Uh, these are Park Tools CN10s. I recommend getting a, a good pair of uh, cable cutters. These are big enough that I can cut both cables and cable housings. And you want to get a good quality uh, cable cutter because you're going to get better cuts and it's going to last long. If you get cheap cable cutters, uh, it's just not going to last long. The little uh, cutting edges are just going to get uh, all marred up and you just get garbage cuts on there. And so I recommend getting a, a good pair of cable cutters. And now, uh, in conjunction with that, a tool I, I often use is an awl. Just, this is more of a general purpose tool, it's not a bike specific tool, but after I cut the cable housings, I use the awl to poke into the end of the cable and open up the lining in there to allow the cable to go smoothly through there. So this is also a really good tool to have. And then this is a tool, it's not something you really need, but what this is used for, it's a Park Tool BT2, and what this is, this part here will clamp onto the cable and then you can, it'll pull it and stretch it out there. So it's, uh, as you're hooking up a cable to uh, brakes or shift uh, derailers, you go ahead, grab the end of the cable and this will pull it nice and tight so that you have the cable nice and taut there so when you uh, tighten down the clamp bolt, uh, you get a nice uh, tight cable there. So, I mean, this is kind of a useful tool to have but not really necessary. Now at some point you're probably going to need a chain breaker. Uh, this is the one I use most of the time. This is a, like a shop grade uh, version and so it's pretty heavy duty. They make smaller, uh, less expensive uh, consumer versions of those and those are just fine as well. Just if you're going to be working a lot, this is nice to have. Here's another chain breaker I have and it presses the uh, pin out like that. But uh, it's kind of cool to have but I really don't use it all that much. Okay, this is pretty much a must-have tool. It's a chain wear gauge, and whenever I start working on another bike, this is one of the first tools I use uh, to check to see if the chain is worn and needs to be replaced. The way it works is it basically just kind of hooks down between the links on one end, and if the other end falls down between uh, the links there, then you know that the chain is worn and needs to be replaced. Uh, they're not real expensive, and it's a tool that I use frequently. Now this is probably one of my cheapest tools. It's just made out of a piece of wire hanger, made it myself, two inches apart at the bends. And this is used for uh, test fitting a chain. Uh, so you can hook it on the one side of the chain and hook it on the other side of the chain to test fit it uh, to see if it's too short, too long. Uh, if you watch some of my videos, you may have seen me use this tool. Uh, it costs basically nothing, a piece of old wire hanger, and, uh, but it's a very handy little tool to have. A chain scrubber. I consider this uh, pretty much a must-have tool. I use this on pretty much every bike I start working on unless I'm going to be replacing the chain. Uh, with the chain on the bike, it just kind of uh, clamps onto the chain like this. This closes up there. You have the grease in there. You just run the, the chain through there and it just scrubs all the old grease and dirt off the chain. Uh, this is a Park Tool version of it, but you can find uh, cheaper versions of it. Uh, cheap import versions on eBay for as cheap as like five bucks but uh, I definitely recommend having a, a chain scrubber handy tool. Okay, this is not really a must-have tool, but I find it very handy. Since I use uh, a lot of KMC brand chains, they have a little uh, master link called a missing link. They kind of uh, pulls uh, apart to kind of lock it in place and pushes together to, uh, to uh, unlock it. And so what this does is 
I can use this to kind of squeeze this and uh, to compress it down to uh, remove it or I can put this inside the, the link thing there and use this to pull it apart and help lock it into place. Not a must have tool but I find it very handy. Freewheel and cassette remover tools. Uh, if you can be doing any serious work on your bike, uh, I consider these must have tools. Uh, these ones down here are for removing freewheels and there's a whole bunch of flavors. There's more flavors than what I have here and um, for the most part they're not expensive. They can be bought for like 10 bucks or less. There's some older ones that uh, might be more expensive. They're a little harder to find. But uh, you know what you basically do figure out what kind of free will you have, what brand and model and stuff. Go out, use Google, and then you figure out what kind of tool you need to remove it. Please do not ask me. Uh, you can use Google as well as I can. Um, now cassettes, more modern cassettes like Shimano Hyperglide have lock rings. And so you use a tool like this. You use that in conjunction with a chain whip. Use chain whip to hold the main body of the cassette and then use this to snap in and then unscrew the lock ring and then you could remove the cassette. Uh, there was another uh, style, older style, of a uh, mailyard and uh, called uh, Heliochromatic and they have a special hub, helicomatic hub, and a helicomatic uh, like, uh, cassette, and you needed a tool like this, and you use this to unscrew the lock ring, and so you use chain whip to hold the, the cassette, and then use this to unscrew the lock ring, and um, so unless you have one of those, uh, you don't need this. If you do have uh, one of those, you definitely need this. Uh, don't try to use pliers because you'll just really muck up the, the lock ring on that. Then there was another style of uh, cassette called Uniglide, in which case the smallest cog acted as a lock ring. So you use one chain whip to hold the body of the cassette and then use the other chain whip to unscrew the smallest cog which would come off and then you could uh, pull the cassette off the hub. So here's a couple tools. I don't really consider these must-have tools and they don't even work in every situation but they're still kind of cool tools to have. Uh, they're sprocket checkers. This one's a roll-off uh, HG check and this is a KMC sprocket checker and um, what they what they do is you hook them onto the, the, the cogs of the rear cassette or freewheel and you can use this to kind of put pressure on it and the chain will wrap around the teeth and if you can kind of easily remove the, the, the last couple uh, links off of the teeth, then you know that the, the sprocket is okay, that uh, co that, that particular uh, cog is okay. Um, if, on the other hand, it kind of catches there, then uh, then what it is likely the, uh, the cassette or freewheel is worn, at least that cog is worn, and so you probably want to replace it. Uh, again, not really must have tools, but still kind of cool tools to have. If you're going to be overhauling uh, wheel hubs, then cone wrenches are a must-have. The most common sizes are like 13, 14, 15, 16 millimeter. And what they are is they're very narrow, thin wrenches. And they're designed to hold onto the cones. The cones have like a very narrow slot with flats on there to hold the wrench that you couldn't use like a regular combination wrench or, or adjustable wrench uh, to hold them. So you use this to hold onto the cone while you tighten or loosen the lock nut. And only use these for, for cones. They're, they're not real tough wrenches. So like this is 15 millimeters, but you wouldn't want to use this as a pedal wrench because it's just not uh, is sturdy enough or heavy enough uh, to loosen and not like that. So um, use these for cones. And so these are a little higher end ones, nice rubber dipped handles here and stuff. But uh, you also get like ones that are like just double ended little uh, metal ones like this. And these will work just fine as well. I made this tool to disassemble uh, Shimano Free Hubs. They used to uh, sell a tool to do that, but uh, it's not really available anymore. I did see one recently selling on eBay for about $100. Um, I made this out of an old socket with a Dremel tool and some files. It cost me probably less than a dollar to actually make, and I have a video on making that. So sometimes, you know, if you can't find the tools, you can just go ahead and make your own tools. And then here's something else I have. They're like little uh, axle vise uh, fittings and they have magnets in there and they just fit within the jaws of like a regular vise and they're designed for holding on to a uh, wheel axle so that while you're working on the uh, hub uh, this will hold it in place without like marring anything but uh, I mean I use them sometimes just not a whole lot. I mean they're, they're kind of nice to have.
a crank puller. I consider this a must-have tool, especially if you have an older bike with square, square taper spindles and cranks. And how this works is this part here threads into the crank arm and then use a wrench to tighten this part in and it'll push the crank arm off the square taper spindle. Um, here's another variation of that where this part uh, screws in and instead of having a wrench it has an arm built onto it and tightens in and pushes the arm off the spindle. Now these, uh, the crank, the threading uh, in the crank arms for the tools are pretty much standard and these tools will work on like 99.9% .9 of the crank arms uh, that are out there. But there are a couple exceptions. Uh, very old uh, cr strong light cranks uh, had a slightly larger opening and required a special tool and I have one of those here. I haven't even used it yet. Um, they're relatively uncommon and another brand TA, old TA cranks also required even a different tool but both of those are relatively, relatively uncommon so for the most part one of these is what you need. Now this is a nice park tool when I use this all the time and it's not an expensive tool. I think it costs like you know, 15 bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. But um, yeah, definitely worth it. Uh, I mean, if you're really, really cheap, you can find some generic ones on eBay for as cheap as like five bucks. One thing I found on those though is the diameter of the threads is slightly smaller on those generic ones. So there's a possibility that they might thread in and you go tighten it, it might rip those threads out. So uh, go ahead and spend the extra little bit and get like more of a, a name brand uh, crank puller on there. It's probably worth the money. Uh, this is a three-jaw puller, and I've used this on occasion to uh, pull crank arms off of a bottom bracket when the uh, threads are stripped in there and the puller tool don't work. Um, the, I got these at Harbor Freight. It's part of a three-piece set. You probably buy the individual size. But, uh, yeah, so I, I really recommend using a puller tool if you can, but if the puller tool is just not working because the threads are stripped, then this might be able to save your day and get that crank arm off of there. And here's like a little uh, chain ring nut wrench. And this is uh, just a simple little tool, but it's actually pretty cool to have. What this does is it holds the, the nuts on the back of the chain rings. So that if you're gonna go ahead and remove it, so you hold that on the one side, and then you use an Allen wrench on the other side to remove that. And this just keeps these parts back here from turning. And simple little tool, but very useful to have. Uh, this is my homemade cotter pin press. Uh, it's designed for old bikes with cottered cranks on there and uh, this helps push the uh, cotter pin out of the crank to, to remove the crank arms. And uh, I made this. I have a video on how to make this out there if you search my videos. Uh, there are commercial versions or were commercial versions of this uh, that are very expensive and this was I think cost like under five bucks to make. But uh, anyway, this is a very useful little tool sometimes. This is a chain ring straightener from VAR and it works, it's got these little slots in there, it just slides over the chain ring here and you can use it to straighten bent chain rings. Um, I haven't used it that much but when I have it's come in extreme handy. It's got a fatter thing here that you can uh, use to uh, straighten dropouts as well. Now having a pedal wrench can definitely be handy. Often uh, like the, the pedal, uh, the flats on a pedal are too narrow for to use like a regular combination wrench or an adjustable wrench and so you, you can get a, a pedal wrench which is going to be actually narrower and fit on those flats. This is the one I, I most commonly use. It's a shop grade uh, pedal wrench from Park Tool and it has two uh, slots here that are 15 millimeters which is the most common size for pedal flats. Uh, here's like a home grade version and this actually has a 15 millimeter opening here it's also got a 9 16 opening here as well. Now here's a wrench I did run into like uh, on a Raleigh some pedals that were actually fatter than 15 millimeters. The, the 15 millimeter wrench just would not fit on there and so I, they were more like 5 8 So what I did was I took a 5 h combination wrench and actually had to grind it down so that it was narrower and would actually fit on the flats so that I could remove the pedals off of that bike. And then there's always going to be little uh, specialty tools like this little tool here is for opening up uh, Shimano SPD type pedals. Uh, you can unscrew the main body out of there for overhauling. And then this tool here is for moving uh, pedal dust caps on like some older type pedals as well. Now bottom brackets come in just a wide variety of styles and 
different styles need different tools. So there's no way I can say, hey, these are must have bottom bracket tools. So what you need to do is figure out what bottom bracket you have, what tool your bottom bracket requires, and then the next time you buy a bike, it may require a completely different style of tool. And you buy another bike, it might require another style of tool. So eventually, you're gonna end up with a whole bunch of different bottom bracket tools like this. Now, this is a homemade tool for uh, removing uh, stuck fixed cups on a bottom bracket. Uh, this comes a la Sh Sheldon Brown and um, fixed cups can be a real bear. They can be really stuck and so what this is, how this works is without this nut and washer, this part here, the bolt is threaded through the fixed cup from inside uh, the bottom bracket and then the, the nut and washer here go on the outside and most fixed cups are removed by turning them clockwise with the exception of French and Italian ones which are uh, removed by turning them counterclockwise but anyway on most ones you'd be tightening this nut here and it'll get tighter and tighter to where it's squeezing the, the uh, fixed cup uh, between the uh, washers here, the lock washers and the regular washer here tighter and tighter where this isn't going to turn anymore and you're tightening it with a big wrench and hopefully it'll grab tight enough to where also now with a big wrench it'll get that uh, fixed cup to turn clockwise and get it loose and remove it. On the, the case of uh, French and Italian ones you'll be turning it from the other side here tightening, tightening, tightening it till eventually it kind of uh, hopefully breaks loose and loosens there. I have a video on uh, using this tool so if you search my videos you'll probably find it. Uh, in addition to this tool a nice big impact wrench can sometimes help by getting, you know, tightening on this uh, nut here, tight, 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 the ratcheting there, boom, and sometimes can help get that fixed cup to break loose with an impact wrench. And here are a pair of bottom bracket thread chasers that I made. I have a video on how I made these. And uh, thread chasers are pretty easy to make, so, but these are pretty useful. Okay, now adjusting headsets requires just some large wrenches. You know, so I have some large wrenches here from Pedro's, 32 and 36 millimeter. Uh, this little guy here is a 32 millimeter. I use this, uh, but very often I find myself using a large adjustable wrench because I may not have the wrench to fit the particular lock nuts uh, on the particular headset. So I use this actually quite often. Now there were some older. Uh, headsets from Shimano, Shimano 600, Shimano Dura-Ace, they had some special fittings on their required special tools. And Shimano made some uh, Dura-Ace, Shimano 600 tools with these kind of fittings on there. And you can find them on eBay, but they're actually pretty expensive. So I have these uh, remakes of them that I found uh, a lot cheaper, but uh, so I at least have the tools that I can serve those, service those particular headsets. Uh, this is my Park Tool Crown Raise Puller. And it's probably one of my most expensive tools, if not my most expensive tool, and I rarely ever use it. Um, more off, I rarely have to pull crown races, and when I do, more often than not, I, I'll go to like a hammer or a screwdriver and just kind of tap it and walk it off, uh, and that usually works. There's been a few rare cases where that didn't work, and I've had to resort to using this tool because it's usually a blade, it's kind of like wedges underneath the crown race and then uses this little crank to just kind of pull it off. Um, but I've rarely had to use it. So this is probably not a tool that you're going to need to buy. Here is my uh, Park Tool crown race setting system. It's got this nice little metal pipe here and it's got all these little fittings here for different sizes of crown races uh, both one inch and one one eighth inch everything like that all real nice uh, but more often than not I use my homemade crown race setting tools piece of PCV pipe and this works just fine I have a video out there on how I made that and uh, it's definitely a lot cheaper than buying the park tool one now to remove uh, headset cuffs, I use this tool. This is my uh, homemade headset cup uh, remover tool. Park Tool makes one and it's actually uh, kind of expensive, but I made this one for a few dollars out of a piece of uh, electrical conduit I bought it at the local hardware store and it works just fine. I have a video on how I made this. And then to press the headset cups back in, I use this tool, my homemade little tool here. I have a video on how I made it, but in essence, it's basically a piece of threaded rod, some washers, and a couple nuts, and it presses the headset cups back in. Uh, there are some commercial tools out there, like my Park Tool, and they're actually pretty pricey. And I wouldn't mind having one, but this actually does a pretty good job here, and it costs probably under 10 bucks to make. 
And this is my star-fangled nut setter. Uh, this is like what's called a star-fangled nut and you'll find these inside the steerer of a, a threadless uh, fork. And what this does is it just kind of screws onto the star-fangled nut like this. And then you use a hammer to pound this down into the steerer tube and it will stop when it gets down to a certain depth which is generally the depth that you want it to, uh, to have it set but this tool will help hold it nice and straight and so uh, it goes in nice and cleanly into the steerer tube cool little tool to have but I really don't use it all that much now this is actually kind of a cool little tool that I've used on occasion uh, it says threadless, but I've used it on threaded forks as well. And what it does is it clamps onto the steerer tube of the fork. Just lock it down in there so it holds it nice and centered. And it's got a slot here for a hacksaw so that you uh, cut down through there and you get a nice straight cut onto the steerer. So if you want to need to cut it just a little bit shorter, all of a sudden, boom, you get a nice clean straight cut using this little uh, cutting guide. Very cool little tool. Now this is a cool vintage tool from Schwinn, a uh, 74180, and what this is used for, it snaps onto the handlebars here, and then comes down, and this allows you to uh, install the, hand, uh, the brake levers onto the drop bars so that they're evenly installed on both sides. Uh, it's not a must-have tool, but it's actually kind of a cool little tool to have. Here's some tools for working on suspension forks, uh, specifically to remove the top caps off them so for overhauling. And these are the, the, the factory made uh, Suntour tools and they're actually kind of hard to find. So before I found those, uh, I made my own little version of this tool here out of an old socket uh, and a Dremel tool and it actually worked. And then here's another tool I made to remove the top cap off an RST fork. And I actually have videos on uh, making these tools. So sometimes if you can't find the actual commercial tools, uh, you can just make your own. This is my Park Tool TS2 truing stand. I've had this for a bunch of years. I bought it years ago on eBay used. It cost me over $100, and, uh, which was my most expensive tool at that point. And uh, that was a, even a great deal then. They've gotten more expensive. Uh, but I can't say enough th nice things about this tool. Uh, I, I use it. If you're going to be truing wheels, it makes the job much easier. If you're going to be building wheels, it's like almost a must to have a good quality truing stand. And this is a shop grade truing stand and it is built to last and will last a lifetime and more. Uh, I have the optional, uh, like the add-on uh, base here, which just makes it a little bit more solid. I can swivel back and forth. It also holds my uh, spoke wrenches there. And this is just a great tool. And it really hasn't changed much over the years. There's a new version out there, the TS2.2. Uh, and I think the main difference is it maybe has like slightly longer arms and allows you to uh, true a 29er wheel without having to take the tire off. This will do the, the 29er wheel just I'd have to take the tire off. Uh, I think I can actually get extensions uh, for this to allow me to do it, but uh, no, this is, a, this is just a great tool and is wor worth the money if you're going to be uh, uh, working on wheels much. Uh, spoke wrenches, these are uh, like pretty much a must-have tool. Uh, you know, they're not that expensive. Uh, you go ahead and buy a, a quality set. The, the price difference between a cheap set and a quality set is negligible. Uh, and these three sizes are going to uh, fit pretty much almost every bike that you're going to be dealing with. There's probably some old bikes that have like a different size and you might have to buy like a different size. But you just go ahead and buy like a set of these uh, and they're not that expensive and they're definitely worth having. Okay, this is my dishing tool. This is from Park Tool. It's made by other companies as well. And what this is used for is to check the dish of the wheel or to make sure that the wheel is, uh, the rim is centered relative to the hub. So you use it on one side, you use it on the other, and the distance between the, uh, the rim and the outside of the hub should be the same on each side. If it's different, then the wheel is going to be off center, and so you want to go ahead and adjust the spokes to go ahead and center the wheel and then recheck the dish. If you're going to uh, be doing anything uh, beyond simple truing of the wheel, then you probably want one of these. Uh, if you're going to be doing wheel building, then you uh, should definitely have one of these. 
Uh, this is a spoke tension meter. Um, what this is used for is measuring the tension of the spokes of a wheel because when uh, you, you want to have this, the tension of the spokes about the same all the way around the wheel and also within certain specifications based on the spoke gauge and stuff. Um, most people aren't going to need one of these. Uh, unless you're uh, doing wheel building, then you definitely want one of these. Or if you're doing pretty extreme uh, truing on a wheel, then it, you might find it useful as well. And this is a nipple driver. This is used for uh, installing spokes into a rim. So it's got the little tip here that locks into the nipple on the rim side. And so when you put that in there, you want to screw it in real fast. You just, this little handle just kind of swivels around and you can screw it in real fast. Um, a lot of times this slips out of the nipple and doesn't work as well as I'd really like. Uh, there might be a better version of this tool out there than this. Yeah, so it's somewhat handy, but I think there might be something better out there. Tire levers. A simple tool. All it does is help you get the tire on and off the rim, but I can't tell you how many tire levers I've broken. Uh, I've never broken one of these. These are from Pedro's and they're my absolute favorite and I recommend them very highly. And then uh, a good quality air pump is a must. Uh, they come down to personal preference of which one you, you like. I have multiple and I use them all, have them located at you know, different places uh, around the house. And uh, I like the Park Tool, uh, great gauge on there, though the head on here is starting to flake out a little bit. Uh, the surface air bones here, I like it, nice big gauge and it pumps a higher volume so I don't have to pump nearly as much to inflate a tire. This one over here, another surface air bones, is uh, pretty reliable, not high volume, but pumps uh, pretty good, but the, the gauge is smaller on it, so it's harder to read. But uh, yeah, so pumps, get a good quality pump, and it comes out of personal preference. Uh, this is my frame alignment gauge from Park Tool, and here's a homemade version I, I made, and I have a video on how to make this. And what this is used to do is check the alignment of the frame, make sure it's straight. Um, you, you basically put it on one side touching against the head tube, the seat tube, and against the, the rear dropout, and then you check it on the other side and they should match. Uh, where this is useful is if you get a bike and you think it's maybe slightly out of alignment, you can go ahead and check it. Or if you do modifications of the frame, such as expanding the rear uh, stays to allow for a larger wheel, then in those cases you, you may want a frame alignment gauge like this. Uh, these are my dropout alignment gauges are from Park Tool and uh, they're actually a pretty cool tool to have. I have a video on how to make homemade versions of them much cheaper but I like the, the real thing actually better. Uh, the, the dropouts on the, on the rear of the bike, uh, uh, they should be parallel. Uh, if they're not parallel, if they're a little bit off, then that causes stress on the axle and can cause the axle to bend or break. And so what these do is they, they lock onto the dropouts on each side and if the uh, dropouts are parallel these things should come out and meet each other right in the middle nice and straight. If they come out and meet and they're a little bit off then now you know that the dropouts are not in alignment and so you can use these tools to actually straighten the dropouts until they are in alignment. Pretty cool tools. This is my Park Tool Derailleur Hanger Alignment Gauge, and I actually use this quite a bit. Uh, it checks to make sure that the uh, derailleur hanger is parallel to the plane of the wheel. If it's not, what you end up having is you have, um, very common, you have the derailleur kind of cage kind of angled in towards the wheel, and when you shift up to the biggest cog, sometimes it'll go ahead and hit the spokes. Or sometimes it'll be angled relative to the wheel, and uh, you end up with like really poor shifting and a lot of noise uh, as the chain is hitting on the pulleys. So what this does, you detach the derailleur and screw this in where the derailleur uh, uh, mounts on to the frame and then uh, in one position you adjust this little rod here till it touches the rim then rotate it around to different angles and it should touch the rim in the exact same spot uh, not kind of be farther away or pushing into the rim if it is then you know that the hanger is not alignment and then you can use this tool to straighten the hanger until the hanger is parallel to the plane of the wheel all the way around very cool tool. And then this is a simple homemade tool, but I've used it quite a bit. Um, it's a, uh, like a spreader or a compressor for like frame dropouts. And I've used this uh, multiple times to spread like rear stays 
out from like 126 millimeters out to 130 millimeters to uh, fit like a, a larger width wheel. I've also used this on front forks uh, to uh, expand or compress the front forks to fit a different width wheel up there as well. It's just a simple little tool. It's just a threaded rod with some nuts and washers, but it's a very handy little tool. And here's a park tool tube straightener. And so this is part here is adjustable. You can put this against the tube here and then hook another tube here and then use this to kind of as a big lever to kind of go ahead and pull it over. Uh, you can use this to for expanding uh, chain stays for a single stay on what you know uh, do it on one side and then do it on the other. I haven't used it a whole lot, but it's kind of nice to have. And here I have three sets of frame blocks, all in different sizes. And what these are used for is, if you have a, uh, a dent in like an old steel frame, uh, what you can do is you can grease up that uh, tube there, wrap these around the tube, put these in a vise, and then kind of put pressure down there, and then twist the frame back and forth, and slowly uh, imp uh, apply more and more pressure till these are in. And that helps work out the dent and minimize the dent in the frame. It also does kind of a little bit of a job on the, on the paint, but uh, it helps get the, uh, the dent out of the frame, or at least minimize it. Kind of cool little tools. Uh, here are some seat tube diameter gauges, and they're just simple little plastic tubes that are like tapered down and they have uh, measurements on there. These are great for putting down into a seat tube to figure out uh, what size of seat post uh, that you uh, should be using on that bike. Um, these ones are made of plastic. There are metal ones out there that are uh, more expensive, but these plastic ones are not too, too bad. And the nest for nice, easy storage too. Pretty cool little tools. And I have this tool here. This is for uh, facing bottom bracket shells or basically uh, making sure that the faces, the outer faces on there are parallel to each side. Um, I got this tool a great deal on eBay. Uh, it's brand new, never been used, and I have not even used it yet. Uh, so looking forward to the chance to use it at some point. I got it. Well, that was a lot of my tools, and if you watch from my videos, you can see many of those tools in action. Hope you found that useful or interesting. If you did, please give my video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing, and you'll see new videos that come out. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page, and I post a lot of stuff over there, pictures and stuff. And I have a webpage, rjthebikeguy.com. Go over there, sign up for that page, and I have my videos categorized. I have forums. Anyway, thank you for watching.